The Protoceratops was a small to medium sized dinosaur from the late Cretaceous period with the highest density of fossils recovered from what is now modern day Mongolia. Featuring a large beak, this herbivore was made famous by the 1971 discovery known as fighting dinosaurs, involving a velociraptor and a protoceratops trapped in combat. It seems as though the protoceratops wasn't a pushover as the fossil remains show the hand of the velociraptor inside the beak of the protoceratops. It's believed that they were buried simultaneously during their battle by either falling into a swamp or being buried by sand. Either way, it produced one of the best preserved specimens of predatory behavior in non-avian dinosaurs. Today, I'm going to be removing the support and gluing together this 3D printed skull of the Protoceratops. All the files are wonderfully put together by Inhuman Species, and the link to where I purchased them is in the description below. This is the largest 3D printing project I've ever done with 39 individual pieces. The total print time was 469 hours and I printed it on the Artillery X1 and the X2. I scaled the files to 150% and then printed them at 0.18mm layer height. The most challenging part of slicing these files was actually the support. Naturally they're very organic shapes and the best orientation wasn't always obvious to minimise support and produce a good surface quality. I added all the supports manually and ran a support test to hopefully make the support easy to remove, but we'll see how that goes in a minute. The support gap was set to 0.18mm, which matches one layer in height. I also enabled dense support layers at 85% for five layers. I set the support angle to alternate every 90 degrees. Some of the support towers are quite tall, and this gives them extra stability. Inhuman Species has done a great job by adding these trapezoidal connection points for every part which makes joining the parts together like a giant 3D jigsaw. The material of choice for this project is our Polylite PLA Silk Bronze. The richness of the silk bronze and the glossy surface had me in awe when I first saw it and in the back of my mind I knew straight away I needed to do something special with it. As with all materials in the Polylite family, it was super easy to work with, printing at a modest print speed of 60 millimeters per second with a 60% outline under speed. During the whole 19 and a half days of constant printing, I only had one failure, which was a layer shift on the X2, and that actually recovered quite well to say it shifted so far. So, onto the support removal. Well, all the support's off now, and uh, it went, let's say, okay. Perhaps I was a little bit conservative with the support. So on the taller structures, the changing at 90 degrees worked really well. The support was very strong. But on the areas where the support was quite, quite low in height, actually it became quite hard to remove. So uh, a normal, regular support would have been easier as I really had to munch through it with the pliers and uh, some pieces uh, took almost 20 minutes to remove and some of the taller pieces I, I uh, removed all the support in about 30 seconds. So anyway, 39 pieces all removed, time to start gluing together. So this isn't the uh, first dinosaur I've made uh, from Inhuman Species. Actually, I made one previously out of Polylite PLA uh, white, and I stained that one with a tea bag to make a cool sort of prehistoric bone uh, effect, make it look like it had just been dug out of the ground. Um, that time I used hot glue to glue everything together, which worked well, but it's not really very strong. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, the hot glue is great because you can just put it in there and then hold it for about five, 10 seconds, then it's set, right? Uh, whereas like an epoxy or something, you know, you're holding it for a very long time. So I'm going to try a different method today using sort of a, it's called power fix, polymer power fix. And this is going to be doing the heavy lifting or the heavy gluing, let's say. And then to hold it in place, I'll be using the hot glue again. So a combination of this one and this one together hopefully will allow a strong joint 
but also make it quite quick to assemble the whole protoceratops skull. So let's crack on with that. So now that's inside, just going to go around quickly with the hot glue. Now there's four pieces here, so we're going to have to be quite quick before we get the next piece in because this glue does cool down quite fast. So as quick as you can, just around, just to hold it in place. Take the next piece here, how does that go on? Like this, and we're in. Now the hot glue should be cooling down, hopefully, and holding it together. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure now, just while the hot glue cools down. And slowly release a bit of pressure. That seems to have held quite well. Already we've got quite a nice looking piece. I think this is the start of the beak here. And you can see the teeth down here. About halfway through now and I must say it is starting to become a little bit of a handful at times but this gluing method is seeming to work quite well I mean the parts seem to be holding almost instantly as I put them together and I haven't had anything come apart yet it is gaining quite a bit of weight uh, but I mean it is just starting to look amazing already and I'm really enjoying this process of, of gluing it all together so I'll carry on see how it goes and then uh, see if we can get this whole thing together in the next half an hour. So, I've finished the assembly of the skull now and most of the parts are together. Well, there's only the mandible left to assemble. I think what I need to do next is then mount it on a, a board. There is a, an area for a pole so we can mount the whole thing up from the base right now. It, it actually weighs quite heavy. Uh, so I think I'm going to leave it here today. Let the mounting adhesive, you know, cure or, uh, overnight. And then uh, when I come back tomorrow, hopefully it's not in 39 pieces on the ground. But as it goes for 3D printing projects, I mean, there's not much that puts a smile on my face than looking at this. The bronze looks amazing. So, the Protoceratops is fully assembled. It's on a base now, and it really, I think it could go in a museum. This silk bronze, just the finish off it, the finish is just amazing, straight off the printer. Uh, all I've done is just remove support and then uh, glue it all together. And it, honestly, it really would not look out of place in the Natural History Museum in any country. Um, the base just knocked up out of uh, MDF and uh, a wooden dowel here, which goes up into the back of the, actually where the ball and socket joint is. Uh, uh, so sort of supporting the head uh, from the place where the real head would be supported on the dinosaur. So again, a great design by Inhuman Species. Uh, definitely go check out their designs because they're all amazing. Um, just used uh, uh, one of our new filaments here. It's Jewel Extrusion uh, Silk PLA. So on one side it has uh, silk blue, the other side silk yellow. So you get this really cool effect with two colors in one print. Uh, there's going to be more colors coming out. And the silk bronze, I mean, it speaks for itself that the sheen that you get off the surface uh, the way it hides the layer lines, really just a spectacular print. So if you've enjoyed this video, uh, I know I have. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, check out Polylight PLA's Silk Series, the Jewel Color Series. I think you're going to love also.